So guys, shit's about to get real. Uh, I've finished the mock-up piece for the neck corset and I've drawn out my pattern pieces on the good fabric and now it's like crunch time. I actually have to cut the pieces out and try and make the legitimate neck corset and I'll be honest um, I'm really friggin nervous about it. Um, there's the stuff back there that's the back side of it which it has a nice like felty kind of soft uh, layer which is really good it's going to be comfortable hopefully but oh my god I am I'm really nervous I have plenty of material because somehow I bought way too much um, I think because it was like wider than I was then I, I probably didn't look at how wide it was and I know I did get a, a little bit extra um, purposely in case I needed some but I didn't realize how much extra I could easily make another neck corset um, and then have some left over so anyway yeah I've, I've got to start the actual thing now um, wish me luck uh, I'll take you along for the ride we'll see what happens I'm mostly nervous because sizing was a little strange um, I'm also nervous because my mock-up although I wasn't really trying to be neat was like much messier than I was expecting so I'm gonna have to really take my time um, I might even unpick it if it turns out like if I do a, a bit of stitching that's a bit bad and a bit messy maybe I'll unpick it I'm not sure but also I, I'm not sure whether if I unpick it you'll if you'll see like needle marks in it as well so yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> guys how much extra material I have look at all of that and then it cascades off the end of the table down there so yeah look if everything goes to shit and I need to make another one I definitely have enough for probably two or three more neck corsets if needs be um I do need to make braces out of well a bracer Possibly two braces depending on how the arm goes with this one. Um, they're the pattern pieces I've cut out there. So now we're going to try and put them together neatly. so far it's actually coming out really well um, it's looking pretty neat so I'm happy about that uh, basically mostly it's not pinned because you have to be really careful uh, when you're pinning you know this sort of material to keep the pins uh, in the seam allowance so that you don't see pin marks so the way they've done the pattern which is pretty clever is to use notches and dots and things to line them up um, so that you can you know line up your pattern pieces properly um, and so far so good I think you know um, like it's it's not perfect but it's you know the the sew lines I've managed to do are fairly neat I'm just doing a little bit of back stitch 
each time to give it a bit of strength. Um, yeah, so now, now that I've done this part, I need to trim it and um, use the iron to press the seams so that I can continue um, and then there'll be boning channels put in and all of that. So yeah, so far so good. So I have trimmed the seams like it said and it did say to press them with um, with the god I was gonna say vacuum cleaner um, with an iron <laughs> I think my brain is fried from doing this all day um, yeah so I tried to do that and it didn't work out so well uh, the first little bit that I did I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, so this part, I had the setting up too high. Uh, I couldn't even remember and I couldn't find the receipt of the exact material that this was. It's sort of a leather type material, but I think it's more of a vinyl. And um, obviously that coating is um, like a plastic synthetic or whatever. And anyway, it, it sort of melted a little bit. Not a big deal, this is the inside of the neck corset, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and I tried to use a bit of uh, baking paper to help press them out. But it's such a stiff material that it just wasn't going to happen. So what I did instead was to um, sew them um, three about 3 mil from the uh, hemline for each, on each side to kind of sew that down and it gives it a nice finish anyway just to have that little sew line not that you can really see it too much because of the um, type of material this is but uh, yeah I, I think that looks good so I did that for all of the edges now now that I've done that part what I need to do is put these strips that I had to cut down and sew those for the boning channels. Um, I'm going to do them like with the soft side facing um, in so that like it's nice and soft to wear and you know make sure that I allow enough room for my boning which is here. Oh actually because I bought a lot of this material in um, different at different times, I went to the um, to Spotlight at the one time to get all the stuff. But like I went to the fabric counter and bought things separately. And I just realised this one does have the material listed here, but it's not very informative. It just says YH textured scales copper. YH. I don't know, some of you um, who are much more accomplished than me, who's an absolute novice, uh, would probably or possibly know what that is. Um, but look, I imagine this is just a type of vinyl, is what it seems like. It feels almost like leather, but really, um, compared to the leather, leather scraps that I have, this does feel more like vinyl to me and particularly having this velvety inside edge would be quite unusual for leather I don't know if I don't know if there's any actual real leathers like that and it would explain why it melted a little from trying to iron it so yeah so anyway um, this is my boning and that will go into the channels and so I just need to make sure I leave enough room on either side. I think if I stitch about 6mm from either side of my strip, 
then I should be good. It says to sew a centimeter either side of it, but I've gone with the exact pattern measurements and everything. And maybe it's the type of boning I have, but uh, I, I think I don't think that's going to allow me enough room to slide the boning in. So uh, I think the best bet for me is to do about six mil, and then I should be good to go. So yes, anyway, that's where we're at. Okay, here's the progress. Um, you might hear that rain outside. It's like nighttime and it's pouring down rain and it's been hailing and everything. It's pretty freezing. Um, I'm about to call it for a night. Um, I've been working on this. So you can see I've done the boning. Um, so the boning's in there now. I've double stitched it around the outside. The pattern actually just said to stitch, you know, where the boning channels are, but I wanted this one to be fairly neat. So I just decided to stitch it um, all the way along, just in case you see any of that stitching. That way it's, um, you know, even all the way along. And I did a double stitch because I just want to make sure the boning stays in there. So I thought it wouldn't hurt to do another stitch. Uh, I have now joined the arm pieces together. I did find one of them after I'd sewn it, because um, it just says to stitch it and then stitch down the seams, which I've done. But it, then I found the stitching between the two pieces started to come undone somehow. So I went back and I did, I don't know if the light's going to work for me here because this is shiny and it's dark and I've got the lights on it but um, I did a zigzag stitch to hold those together I may even put another piece of material like I did for the boning even though this doesn't need boning because it's under the arm um, and then stitch either side of it just for extra strength I'm not sure yet but I might do that just in case because I do want to make sure it's nice and sturdy and um, good quality but yeah, so I've got to put the sleeve on uh, sleeve on now. It's got one sleeve and then it's got like an, um, a, sh a cap on the shoulder, like um, oh, I guess it is just called a shoulder cap or whatever on the other shoulder. So I've got to do that next. I do have my piece over there. I did try to adjust the size so that it will be the right length for my arm. I hope to God I've done it correctly. Um, I did do it based on the mock-up piece I did, but the mock-up was so different because it's different material and messily done, really. Uh, so I, I just hope, I hope it's all right, but uh, we'll see. So yeah, that that's where I'm at. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, you know, like the stitching isn't perfect, and the difficulty is with this material is if you get the stitching wrong, you you really can't uh, redo it because we well, can, but if you pull out the stitching you'll see the um, needle holes there so you're sort of stuck with um, damage to the material wherever you take it out so there were a couple of lines that like I mean even right here I don't know if it's gonna focus well enough for you but uh, where it's a bit messy and um, you know because I was trying to firstly get the right thickness on this side for boning and then um, try and get the stitching nice on this side as well and between the two of them it sometimes didn't work out um, 
as nicely as I wanted, but not too bad. So anyway, that's where I'm at and we will continue probably tomorrow. sleeve on but I've had some issues uh, I sewed I, I tried really hard to do um, a hem on either side which is wonky and then also managed to sew over part of the shoulder part um, it's hard to see from here so that's like the sleeve and the shoulder and yeah so I wasn't meant to do that um, but it's so hard to do it with this um, leathery kind of material because you can't really shove it under the um, the foot very easily and maneuver it around easily and yeah so as, as hard as I tried I did stuff that up a little bit so now I need to unpick it I've started unpicking it and then I might try to hem that again it's it's really just doing a, a sewing hem um, of the inside seam down so I've oh, so I put it inside out here hopefully you'll be able to see that um, so I'm sewing like half a centimeter from either side ish but honestly it's messy as crap and it's the best I can do uh, with this material but I'm hoping that I can get away with it a little bit because um, like I, I'm gonna fix this shoulder part um, but just the hemline hopefully won't be too visible because there should be um, a fair bit of embellishment on this eventually I think um, I haven't exactly worked out how I want to do it yet but I have a little bit of an idea in my mind uh, and I also ran out of the thread I was using so I had this good brown thread that was like um, you know almost same color and I've run out of that so now I've moved on to a black thread which is much less forgiving when you make a mistake as well which is a real pain in the bum so anyway this is where we're at I haven't tried this on yet that's the other thing that I'm gonna have to check and see because I am a little bit concerned about the sleeve um, I did pop the sleeve over my arm on its own like before sewing it on and it, it seemed to fit okay it was a little bit hard to bend my arm because just you know you can see like how thick and sturdy this material is but it seemed okay so we'll see we'll see all right hallelujah it fits I can even bend my arm which is amazing uh, the back's not done up I haven't got any of the um, eyelets in there or grommets or whatever you want to call them so it is just sort of sitting loose but this is sort of how it's going to sit probably a little like firmer and neater and everything so yay so happy about that uh, I've got to put the cap on this arm this is still messy as crap but uh, I'm just gonna have to go with it because the more you unpick and redo it just looks worse and worse plus I'm hoping I can kind of embellish that part enough that it doesn't bother me anymore um, and look no one else is probably going to notice it um, it's just that I notice it and it's messy and it bugs the crap out of me but um, overall I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out uh, no actually I'm really happy with how this is coming out and I love this material it is so awesome um, yeah not cheap but far out it's so good like doesn't that just look like dragon scales they had this in um like a gunmetal color as well 
and I nearly went for that but I kind of had this golden red thing in my mind so yeah I ended up going for this one um, yeah really happy now I'm gonna do cap um, I've got to put the um, what's it called bias tape or whatever they call it um, this is how novice I am I can't remember what it's called but you know the um, let me get the name of it okay I had it right <laughs> the bias tape uh, now they didn't have a lot of colors available for bias tape I got black I think I got black yeah um, I'm not sure if I want to leave it black what I'm thinking like I'll I'll use the black um, but what I'm thinking I may do is use some of my fabric paint over the top because uh, if you've watched any of my um, or not any of my but like my Skeksis necklace video sorry I'm like talking to you from up there but um, I used the fabric paint on the wool and uh, and it had a really nice uh, like coppery bronzy tone like this so I actually think that could look quite good um, if I don't want it to be so contrasting but I'll see I mean maybe I'll do the black and I'll um, really enjoy that contrast so anyway um, happy so far with the progress made a huge mess of that tried to do the bias binding tape but it's so thin that trying to get it over both sides of this leather and all the layers and some parts is so hard so there's parts that just this part hasn't sewn down properly um, over here it hasn't I'm gonna have to probably unpick all of that and try again I even did two passes on it thinking maybe I can um, maybe I can catch the bits that didn't catch on the second go and that didn't work either so um, and it keeps going blurry yeah so I don't know everything else is going well that's not looking so great uh, so we'll see well, worst case, I can cover it up with some lace or something like that, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's the next day and I pulled out that horrible stitching that I did. Um, and uh, with the bias binding and well, it took ages, but I've tacked it on now and I seem to have cat hair all over the place. Because I had it on the um, couch with me while I was tacking it on. So I just did a, uh, what do they call it, basting stitch or whatever. You know, just a tacking stitch. And uh, I've done the bottom as well. So I haven't actually machine sewed this on yet. Um, I also did around uh, the sleeve. You're meant to put a hem on the sleeve, sleeve. And I'm sure if it was any other material that wasn't as stiff you probably could do a hem on the sleeve um, I tried and it was gonna be an absolute nightmare and because like it's difficult to pin this stuff as well um, like pin marks will show and it's like difficult to just even get it to bend over and stay there while trying to pin and sew and everything anyway I tried it didn't work out too well so I, I gave up on that and I've use the bias on there as well again I haven't machine sewed that yet I'm hoping that I can because <laughs> again it's just it's just awkward because of the stiffness of the material to try and um, sew and keep the rest of it out of the way but I think because I've stitched it on um, with a little tacking stitch first it should be okay so yeah so anyway now now I'm going to machine sew this stuff and hope to god 
it ends up looking halfway reasonable. Um, wish me luck guys, I need lots and lots of luck and miracles and leprechauns coming out of rainbows and whatever else you can think of, I need that um, and yeah, I'll let you know how I go. guys well this is the net corset um, basically finished but there will be some embellishments happening on this as well um, in the pattern itself there's like shoulder armor that you put onto this side uh, there is also a bracer which I haven't popped on yet but same material just a lace-up bracer on here which I have created um, but you'll see me wear that when I put the full costume on so um, it's got all the boning in it, of course. Um, the bending of the arm is a little bit tight, just based on the type of material this is. But I can, I can bend, so um, that's fine. I don't have as much movement as I would have, you know, if it was like different material. But enough that I'm happy with it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be doing some embellishment, like I said. And that will be, I think, in a different video because there's um, there's some major components to that. So, um, yeah, I'm basically going to be creating, I hope, a dragon skull to go on this shoulder. And then I do have some beads and lace and things for embellishment, which I might put on. I'm thinking of having something maybe at the front here. I don't want to cover up too much of what's going on, but I might have something a little bit just on this um, shoulder detail here. Um, I may put a little bit just at the sleeve, at the bottom of the sleeve as well. And maybe, I'm thinking maybe a dragon's eye here, but we'll see if I like that when I see it all put together. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, it feels good on, um, you know, it takes a bit of getting used to when you've got a neck corset because it is um, high up the neck. If you're not comfortable wearing, say, a choker or what have you, I wouldn't wear a neck corset, but I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I do need help getting into this um, and probably out of it as well. Oh, I might be able to get out of it, but getting it, it laced up I definitely need help so if you know if that bothers you if you're gonna feel claustrophobic or worried about your neck or whatever um, then I'd say maybe a neck corset isn't for you but I think it looks really bloody cool so I hope you enjoyed seeing me put this together um, stay tuned for more parts of the costume to come um, including like I said the embellishment of this um, time permitting <laughs> uh, and 
uh, the corset and the skirt and everything else. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time in Faywood. Bye, guys. Thank you.